2.5 kilometers down. How um, long do you reckon it'll take us to? Yeah, it's, it's down here somewhere. It's the way down here. I'll just find it. At all. Well, we can find a different way up when we go up. Because yeah. it was quite child friendly, remember? Oh, actually, we were here. Yeah, we were here. Sooty. Yeah. And that was here. Nah. Ah! You good? All right. Yeah. Okay. So the tide is perfect. I'm foraging. Yeah, definitely not the the one. It's further. It's all right. This is where you put your boots on. Here's your first one. Is it good size? Yeah. And clean too. All right, so we've reached the spot. Now that took us um, just on 45 minutes to get down here because it was just taking our time enjoying the scenery. And as you can see, um, it's low tide at the moment because at high tide, this whole area is filled with water. And the last time I was here was uh, on my earlier video, the coastal foraging in the Hawkesbury. And what we're gonna be um, gathering today is um, mud whelks or they're also known as cone snails. I'll just give you a close look on what one of these are. It's just down here. All right. Okay, so that's one there. And these are quite a del delicacy in uh, Vietnamese culture. I'm quite fond of these myself. I've got a couple of pretty good recipes up my sleeve for what I'm gonna be cooking with these. Yeah, so that's what they are. Just give you a close up on that. Also guys, I um, need to mention, when you're gathering these, just check with the local regulation because uh, we are in the, a national park and I have checked with the rangers. Uh, down in the national park, we're not allowed to take any flora and fauna, but however, this is part of the waterways and um, what we're doing here is uh, legal. You just got to follow the limits. The limits is uh, 20 per person. So I've got myself and uh, wifey here today. We've got to get our limit and then we'll come home and uh, cook up a storm. Oh, looks like we won't have to travel too far to gather our limit. They're all just like in clusters. Just get a close up on that one there, see? Uh, there it is there. And just right there, there's another one there. Okay. So how many is that? That's four. 
That's five, six, seven. No. Ooh, that's a good oyster. Take it. Yeah, I'm gonna take it. We're gonna eat it when we get home. Okay. What about that cluster? Yeah. Far out. Got oh, good oysters here. These are Sydney rock oysters. So they don't get really big? Yeah. Um, there's limits with these too, there's like 50. <laughs> You're allowed to get more. But yeah. We've got some oysters, that's for sure. Um, certainly not to eat raw though, because this water's a little bit heavy gone. Actually, I'll take it on the way back in. Yeah, just put it together with this cluster here, there's heaps. Oh, that's a good sized one. Uh, Someone yeah. shacked it? No, no, it, it died. Yeah, but there's there's a lot of good ones there. Go home. This you just chuck on the fire and it open up. Yeah. Another cluster of oysters here. Maybe you should buy some and compare the two. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're gonna get cooked anyway, so it's no. Oh. Point. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, just put it together, hun. Right, yeah. It. So there's some oysters. Too. Okay. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, last time I came here, we came in by boat, and where we were foraging, it's actually closer out to the mouth of the Jerusalem Bay. Look at the crabs! Oh, wow, soldier crabs. Closer. Oh, they're going into the water. Yeah. How pretty is that? Let's grab one of these soldier crabs and look and they will just roll up into a ball when they get frightened. Whoop. Now in China they actually gather these right and they make a crab sauce out of it. So they smash it up and ferment it in salt. Oh, look at that. The ones over there. Yeah. Oh, look how it's gone down. Yeah, they dig themselves into the ground. It looks so pretty, though. And these are good whiting bait. This fella here looks like something from the movie War of the Worlds. swimming they're floating yeah just to get across really it's just to get away from us <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got one to see it done pretty good stuff you know I like it when there's like a massive group of it, eh? Okay, so um, I've got the mud whelks in the fish tank purging. I'll probably leave them there to purge overnight for 24 hours just to get rid of the grit. Um, 
as you can see, also gathered a bunch of these lovely rock oysters, some of them are fairly plump as well. And what I'm going to be doing with these is I'm going to just chuck them straight on the charcoal fire. Um, they'll cook and they'll open up and this is going to be a lovely treat. So the flame is just about nearly done. And um, we'll get some on. Let's just spread these cold out. What we want is a very intense heat. So the oysters will open up very quickly without drying out. Alright, good. Let's put the grill on. I think I'll go with one of these chunks first. Let's get that on there. Let that cook up. You can hear them start to sizzle. Right, these oysters are just about ready. Let's take them off. Now you're gonna have to excuse me guys, the, the lighting's pretty bad because it's dark now. So, can't really show you a good demonstration of what one looks like. I've got one here. Bring that in close to the camera. Yeah, lovely cooked oyster. Now that's sensational. Let's go have a quick taste on that, a sneaky taste. Mmm. Wow, oh, that's so sweet. That's awesome. Alright, guys, so I'm just going to kick back and enjoy these oysters. Um, we'll check in tomorrow. I'm going to give you a proper demonstration on um, the mud whelks. We're going to be doing an awesome recipe. Now that the snails are perched overnight, um, they're ready to cook. Now I'll just give you a close up on what they're like. So basically, what I've done to them is I've scrubbed all the seaweed off and uh, the excess grit. And I've also smashed the tails now uh, the reason for that is just that once they're cooked with the uh, tail still intact they'll be impossible to remove from the snails and the idea of this is um, it also helps to absorb the flavours of the, the ingredients that they've been cooked in and what we also do is once they're cooked we'll suck them from the front there and the snail will actually pop out and just makes it easy removing. Now this is what one is like uh, before it was processed and this is the finished product there. And so on the menu today, what I'm going to be doing is um, a European style dish. Uh, it's more like a Mediterranean Spanish infused. So what it's going to be cooked with is um, some of my home cured pork and chorizo, a bit of brown onion. Um, I'm going to be frying it in olive oil with some white wine. So that's going to be lovely. I'm going to serve it with a crusty bread. Now, um, I've also done an earlier video with an in-depth demonstration on how I processed um, these snails. Uh, I skipped it in this one, just due to the fact it can be a bit long-winded. If you're interested in checking it out, uh, just hit it on the link above. And there's also um, another sensational recipe that I also made with these as well. Okay, so without further ado, we'll start cooking. And see you all back when it's time for the tasting.
Alrighty, time to eat. Now as you can see the recipe is quite simple. I'll just take one of these out. We'll go for this guy here. Whoa, still hot. Now, the, the back of the tail part there, um, it's its digestive tract and it is the poo, so it can be a bit gritty. Uh, it is edible however, but um, it's to the acquired taste, so for those of you, some, some people prefer to eat it, some don't. I'm one of those that don't, so I'll just uh, discard that. And the top of the shell there, that's that lid, that's hard, don't eat that as well. But pop mat, everything else is quite sensational. Didn't be the fork, but anyway, I'll we'll just dip that in there, and I'll go with a bit of crusty bread as well. So I'll dip it into that chowder stuff there. Give me a close up on that, and let's go in for the kill. Mmm. Definitely the purging in the salt water helps. Now, um, I know that not everyone has a salt water tank, but what you can do is um, bring a bucket of seawater home and just keep it cool, keep it overnight in the seawater. And if you've got an aerator, which is the thing that blows bubbles in there, that'll help either uh, as well. And you, you purge them overnight, you get through all the sand and the grit, they spit it all out, and they taste good. Yeah, so once again guys, I'm going to be thoroughly enjoying my lunch on this beautiful afternoon. But um, hope you enjoyed the video, and until the next one, bye for now.